stand up here and not fall off the step. Someone to ask me, they seem to think I'm short. <laughs> so here we go, into Lent. Are you ready? I don't know about you, but I was pretty surprised to wake up and it's March 1st. All right, what's going on? It's so fast right now. We're ending the season of Epiphany. Epiphany being the season when we have once again revealed to us God in Christ. Who God is, who Jesus is, especially to the Gentiles. God in Christ. And it answers the question, who is Jesus? Who is this Christ? Now we move to a new question, which is, who are we? This season of Lent engages that question. Who are we? We're going to do this for 40 days. You'll be glad to hear Sundays are exempt. <laughs> Giving up something precious to you. Uh, Mondays are going to be rough for a lot of people. 40 days of Lent, the same amount of time that Jesus spent in the wilderness. The same amount of time that Elijah spent fasting in the wilderness. The same amount of time that Moses spent fasting on the mountain. <laughs> so we're connected in this 40 days with all of them and all of their experiences. And connected with that ancient world and the world that has happened in between. If God is going to live as a person, if God is going to live as a human, then he has to experience all the things humans experience, right? First of all, has to be born, right? That's how we all got here. Has to die, something we all have in common, that we all die. He'll learn, right? Everybody, uh, virtually everybody here knows more than they did the day they were born. Right? We all learn things to walk, to talk, education, wisdom as we grow. He grows. We see him grow in scripture as human beings. And we suffer. And he suffers. And we are tempted as he is tempted. Tempted to what? All those things it means to be human, what is temptation? On Ash Wednesday, we say, remember you are of the earth, and to earth you shall return. Remember you are dust, and to dust you shall return. But what dust? What dust? The elements that make up our bodies physically are as old as the universe. We're a lot older than we look. <laughs> that should be a relief to all of us, right? The, the way we stacked up, the way the universe stacked up and made of Clayola or anybody is our unique way. But the elements are universal elements. They have always been here, ever since the universe was. We are made of dust that is stardust. Remember you are dust, and to dust you will return. As humans, we have a unique role in creation. Because we carry within us divine life. And we are part of the fellowship of the Holy Trinity. Not that we are divine, we are not divine, we carry it like vessels. That's why we come to this altar, to be renewed in divine life, so that we can then carry it out. This is what Jesus became part of. As humans, we were created to be both material and spiritual, inextricably bound up together. It is incarnational. This is why God is incarnate. And 
why to give glory to God throughout our lives. To articulate the glory of God by the way we live, by what we do and say, as witnesses to God. Temptation draws us away from this life. Away from that life that we were created to have. And it does that in two ways. Either it makes us blind to ourselves, to who we are, or it makes us blind to who God is. It upsets the balance that we signify, that we are. It throws us off center. This is what the devil's trying to do to Jesus, and he does it at a time when Jesus is very weak, very fragile. I have a friend one time who decided to fast for all of them. And his doctor said, well, no. <laughs> no, you can't do that. You can fast for 39 days, and on the 40th day you die. <laughs> you won't make it to Easter. You're going to have to do something during that time. Luckily, Sundays are exempt. Look at the logic of what the Satan does, besides using scripture. Right, I, as part of his argument, watch out for that, right? But look at the logic of what he does. If you're going to feed 50,000 people, 50, I mean 5,000, 5,000 5, men plus all those others, right? <laughs> if you're going to feed all those people, wouldn't it be really helpful to be able to make stones into bread? That would be handy. Right? If, if you're going to go overturn tables in the temple and preach against Pharisees, i.e. against the power structures of the day, wouldn't you be really happy to come have power, like full authority? That, that would be handy. If you are going to Jerusalem where you know they're plotting to kill you, wouldn't it be nice if you knew they couldn't hurt you? Power, abundance, safety. All of these would be helpful to Jesus in his ministry of challenging the status quo, of preaching against power structures, of risking everything. It's not, he's not inviting Jesus to self-indulgence, certainly many of us are tempted to that, but rather to things that would truly help his ministry. But if Jesus accepts this offer, it throws everything out of balance, literally everything out of balance for who Jesus is. So Jesus rebalances. Look at what he does with these verbs and nouns. Look at how he changes this discussion. He says, Satan says, if you are the son of God, full pause, editorial comment, that word's not if, just so you know. It's really since. This is not Satan questioning who Jesus is. Okay. Since you are the son of God, Command this stone to become a loaf of bread. And Jesus says, one does not live by bread alone. From command to live. Worship me and it will all be yours, he says. Worship the Lord your God and serve him. So it moves from worship to worship and serve. Since you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. Jesus says, do not test the Lord. So it moves from daring God to trusting God. He rebalances worship to worship and serve. From daring to trust. From command to live. He rebalances it. And then he goes and feeds the 5,000 plus everybody around him is healed. He raises the dead. 
He commands the elements. He knocks over tables in the temple and challenges the powers that be and preaches against the Pharisees. He goes to Jerusalem where they're plotting to kill him, and they do, risking everything. He knows who he is, and he knows who God is, and he keeps them in balance. It shows us how to get through our own temptations, something we're considering during Lent, to live fully with God, to worship and serve God, to trust God. And then when we go out and we upset the status quo and we preach against the powers that are, and we show God's love to the whole world, and we become even more truly and really what we 